In this video, we're going to look at the FIFO method, but we're going to look at the second department, so we're adding transferred in units to this process. We're going to use the same numbers we used in the last video for weighted average so that you can compare the results of the two methods side by side. So let's go ahead and turn to the spreadsheet and start filling in our missing numbers. We had 75,000 units in beginning inventory and we had 43,500 transferred in dollars associated with those units. Because materials are added at the end of the process, there are no material dollars in beginning inventory and there was $2,500 of conversion costs. So the amount of money in our beginning inventory is $46,000. We transferred in 717,500 units at a cost or an associated cost of 399,278. During the month, we added 180,800 material dollars and 538,575 conversion dollars, or a total of $1,118,653 for the month. We have a total of 792,500 units to account for, total transferred in dollars, total materials, total conversion, and total dollars to account for are all the same as they were in the last video. Additionally, we transferred out 754,500 units, just like we did in the weighted average part two video, leaving us with 38,000 units in ending inventory. Now let's talk about the degree of completion. Transferred in units are always 100% complete. They are finished in the first department and they're brought in 100% complete with respect to that first department all the time. So their beginning degree of completion is 100% as is their ending degree of completion. Now materials we said are added at the end of the process. And so by definition, anything that was not completed at the end of last month is 0% complete and anything that is not completed at the end of this month is also 0% complete. With conversion dollars, we didn't have a beginning degree of completion in the last video, but we're going to use 80% for that and 60% just like the last video. Next, we want to calculate equivalent units starting with transferred in units. What we need to do is figure out how many of these 75,000 units were actually completed this month with respect to transferred in costs. And so that is going to be the 75,000 units times one minus the beginning degree of completion. Now, do you know what that answer is going to be? Zero, right? We didn't do anything to these units with respect to transferred in costs this month it was all done in the previous department. We did, however, start and complete some units with respect to transferred in costs. We want to take all of the ones that were transferred out during the period, and we want to subtract from that the units that were started last month, and this gives us the units that were started and completed this month, 679,500 units were started this month and finished this month. Then we also have the ending WIP. How much of the transferred in costs were added to the ending WIP? Well, of course, 100%. So our equivalent units for work done this month is 717,500, and that should make sense because that is the number of units that we transferred in this month. Let's go on to materials. At the beginning of the month, we had 75,000 units that were 0% complete. So I want to figure out how much of that we did this month. We always have to assume that these units are completed at the end of the month. So do you know what this number will be? 75,000. We did all of the additions to the materials on the units that we transferred out during the month. We're going to figure out how many we started and completed during the month. Well, that is the amount transferred out minus the amount we started last month gives us the ones we started and finished this month, and that's 679,500. 
that will be the same number over here as well, right? The number that we transferred out minus the numbers we started last month tell us how many we started and completed. Let's finish working on materials first. My ending whip has 38,000 units in it. How many of the materials have we added to those units? None. So when we add these three numbers together, we get our equivalent units with respect to materials. Now, if you're looking at what you did for the weighted average method, you can see that we already have different equivalent units in all in both cases. We will have different equivalent units in all three. For the conversion costs, we started the month with 75,000 units that were already 80% complete. So what we need to do is the remaining 20% to those, the complement, so 1 minus 80%, that's $15,000. And again, you could multiply that out. 75,000 times 0.2 or times 20% will give you that 15,000. The ending units, units and in ending inventory, 38,000 of them, 60% complete. That gives us 22,800. And so the equivalent units with respect to conversion under the FIFO method are 717,300. The other difference between FIFO and weighted average, you'll recall, is that we are only going to divide by the new money, only the money that we added during the period, because the money that was added or left over from last month has to go out the door with our transfers automatically. So we're going to take that amount. Again, let's just repeat that. We're going to take the new money only. We're going to divide by total equivalent units, and that gives us the cost per equivalent unit for this month. The new money only divided by the total equivalent units for conversion. Okay, let's talk about how much we're going to transfer out. We're going to start with transferred in costs. First thing we have to do is grab the old money because that is assumed to go out right away. We're going to then take the sum of what was started last month and completed this month and what was started this month and completed this month and we're going to take that times our cost per equivalent unit and add that to that beginning money, and that gives us 421,632. What's left in ending whip is the equivalent units in ending whip times the cost per equivalent unit. Let's go ahead and check that. So we're going to take all the money we need to account for minus what's transferred out minus what's left in ending whip, and that gives us a zero. Let's repeat that formula under materials. We're going to start out by grabbing the old money. To that, we're going to add the sum of what was started last month and completed this month, and what was started this month and completed this month, times that cost per equivalent unit, and that gives us 180,800. We can just verify if I take the ending whip, equivalent units times that cost per equivalent unit, I get zero. And we can run that through our check again. All the money we have to account for minus what's transferred out minus what's in ending whip is zero. One more time for conversion. Grab the old money. Add to that the sum of what was started last month and what was started this month and completed. Take that times the cost per equivalent unit, that gives you your transferred out amount. Take the equivalent units in ending whip times your cost per equivalent unit, that gives you the amount left in ending whip. We're going to check that answer, and we've got zero. We can go ahead and add across. So the total value transferred out, the total value left in ending whip. I'm going to go ahead and check that answer and I get zero. Our cost per unit, we're going to take the total dollar amount that we're transferring out, divide it by the total number of units, we get $1.49. Remember, under the FIFO method, you cannot add these three together and get the same answer. This is $1.54. Why? Because we have dollars up in the beginning column, 
that are not included in the cost per equivalent unit. The journal entry will be to journalize it to finish goods inventory. We're going to put in the amount transferred out and the credit will be to second department WIP. And that concludes the video for process costing under the FIFO method in the second department with transferred in costs.